welcome, welcome, welcome to an emergency episode of the Fantasy Fangirls Podcast, where two sisters dive deep into beloved fantasy lore, characters, themes, theories, and more. I'm Lexi. And I'm Nicole. And for today's emergency bonus episode, I love that that's what you called it. <laughs> The official blurb for Onyx Storm is out, everybody. So Nicole and I dropped literally everything. My hair is still wet. I had to practically run out of the grocery store. That is that is the level that we're at right now. As always, we are going to kick this off with a content warning. While this episode focuses on the 143 words of the Onyx Storm blurb, this discussion will include everything related to Empyrean. We are talking spoilers for Iron Flame, Fourth Wing, interviews with Rebecca Yaros. If it's Empyrean related, we will bring it up. Also, please note that this did just drop this morning. We are in hyper go, go, go mode. And so these are only our initial thoughts. So with all of that said, the blurb might be 143 words, but this episode won't be. While we will be reading the blurb on here. So if you have not seen the post yet, you will be able to hear it on here. But if you have not read the series, please go do that because this will make a lot more sense. We will be here when you're done. Next, we at Fantasy Fangirls are adults who say adult things about adult books. In other words, friends, this podcast is rated R. Honestly, the R rating is just going to be my stream of conscious profanities that I have in my head for the last two hours. So please do be mindful of those little listening ears. We also want to remind you of our upcoming live show at Comedy Works South in Denver, Colorado on October 20th. It's coming up so fast. So fast. Our topic is going to be our biggest questions and predictions going into Onyx Storm. And honestly, this is probably going to be a very large part of the live show. And general admission tickets are still available. So link is in the show notes to learn more. And now it is time to go literally line by line of the blurb of Onyx Storm. Let's kick this off with a bit of a different battle brief, aka a reading of the blurb. I'm not as good as Michael, so please be kind to me, but I'm going to do my best. After nearly 18 months at Buzgayeth War College, Violet Sorengale knows there's no more time for lessons. Dun, dun, dun. No more time for uncertainty. Dun, dun, dun. Because the battle has truly begun. And with enemies closing in from outside their walls and within their ranks, it is impossible to know who to trust. Now, Violet must journey beyond the failing Aretian wards to seek allies from unfamiliar lands to stand with Navarre. This trip will test every bit of her wit, luck, and strength, but she will do anything to save those she loves, her dragons, her family, her home, and him. Even if it means keeping a secret so big, it could destroy everything. They need an army. They need power. They need magic. And they need the one thing only Violet can find. The truth! But a storm is coming and not everyone can survive. It's wrath! Dun, dun, dun! (laughs) Not as good as Michael, but I did my best. (laughs) It's too much fun. All right, friends, it is time to tap into our signet powers and discuss this blurb. I just love saying that word blurb (laughs) line by line. Okay, so let's start here at the beginning. Quote, after nearly 18 months at Biscayeth War College, Violet Sorengale knows there's no more time for lessons. So we can safely assume we'll pick up right where we left off, which is halfway through Violet's second year. And with no more time for lessons, this applies to at least Violet, although I will also guess this includes second squad with her because they stick together. Does this mean classes are over for all cadets? My guess is our traditional class setting that we're used to is definitely over. And now it's wartime briefings, trainings, and strategy sessions. I think even in the first book, Violet says something along the lines of, I don't even know if we'll finish this year before we're called out into the field. My guess is this is the called out into the field. Now, I am kind of getting from this blurb, though, like secret Violet mission, but we'll get into that in a second. I do want to talk about the W plot structure of this book, because we do know that Rebecca not only plots all of her books within the W plot structure, but also her entire series is within the W plot structure. And without going too deep into that, because honestly, there's just not enough room in my brain to store all of that information today. I do want to talk about where we are within the series W, and that is we're at the second triggering event. The first triggering event is the very first part of the W. We can assume that was um, her learning the truth about about Bezgayeth and Navarre and the secrets they're keeping. Um, We can also assume that's her starting at Bezgayeth. Then the second part, and this is where Iron Flame was, is the first, I'll call it pivot. The time where 
our our characters have to change their way of thinking. We can assume this was not only them leaving Bezgaeth, but I'm also going to assume that the very end of the book where Zayden turns Venon, that is a definite pivot in our story for sure. So I would almost think that Zayden turning Venon is the second triggering event. I don't think it is. I truly don't think it is. I think that the second triggering event is going to happen at some time in Onyx Storm. But I'll go ahead and say this. We do know that after the second triggering event, it's just downhill. It's bad news bears. So So that's why I think that it is at the very beginning of this book or it was at the end of Iron Flame. The only reason I don't think it's at the end of Iron Flame is because she plots her entire series out within a W structure. And if that's the case, then the end of Iron Flame would be part three of the W structure. So I'm assuming that either the end of Onyx Storm is going to be the second triggering event or somewhere in the beginning. So here's what I'm thinking given off the, the first line that we're already so, so invested in is I think that the second triggering event is going to be them being called out into the field. It's going to be them no longer in this traditional class setting that you're saying. And it, honestly, it could be both. It could be both um, Zayden turning and also this, you know, this change of class structure. It could also be at the end of Onyx Storm with some really impactful death or some big knowledge drop or learning Papa Sorengale's research. Who knows? We'll get to that in a second. It could be D all of the above. I don't know. But It is interesting thinking of this very first line, given where we are within the W. Let's move to the second line. Quote, no more time for uncertainty. Violet experienced a lot of uncertainty in Iron Flame after her world turned upside down, both inwardly with her uncertainty about knowledge and truth and outwardly. Who could she trust? Who is the enemy? She doesn't have time to second guess herself anymore. And I'll venture to guess she also doesn't have time to question so much of what she struggled with in Iron Flame, specifically around who she can trust. This no time for uncertainty applies to everyone else too. Just like at the end of part one in Iron Flame, it's time to pick a side. Are you with the enemy, aka the Venon, or are you with the people who want to save civilization? After Iron Flame's final battle, there is no in between anymore. And there had been some people previously who, for instance, did stay at Biscayeth, even though, of course, they do want to be part of civilization, but maybe them and their dragons, like they weren't ready to take that jump. Now it really is a line in the sand. Are you with us or are you not? Real quick, though, what is the opposite of uncertainty? Uncertainty, conviction, truth. Rebecca Yaros has mentioned there is a moment in Onyx Storm where Violet realizes she's the most powerful writer of her generation. This sense of certainty could lend into that revelation too. Absolutely. And you say the word truth, which we're going to be talking about a lot today. We can't help but hear the word truth and not think of one of the most popular second signet options, which is truth sayer. And I do wonder if this here is a nod to this. No more time for uncertainty, which means it is only time for truth. But I also want to point out, because I'm going to be doing this a lot today, what also counteracts uncertainty, information, which is what the people who become intrinsics, that is their base need. And we know signets manifest based off of what you need and who you are at your core. I'm not sure if this no more time for uncertainty is a nod to a second signet. I mean, there's a line later that's a little bit more cut and dry towards it. So I'm definitely leaning into what you're saying here, Lex, about this is her realizing how important she is in the war. And I love that. And I honestly hope that is it over a second signet. I'll also say too, as much as it made sense for Iron Flame with her uncertainty, we we need a book where she does have more certainty, where she does have more self-confidence because... We did that already. And I honestly Please move on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I don't, very nicely. <laughs> and I, I I don't think that we're meant to stay in that because one of the things that Rebecca Yaros does so well with the fourth wing in the Empyrean world is her characters have momentum. They yes. don't really stay in one space for a long time. Because even Violet, she started off the book feeling very uncertain. She didn't know who to trust. But then she did grab life by the dragon horns and still with uncertainty charged into battle. So I do think think that this is definitely the next phase in Violet's hero's journey. Speaking of next, let's go to the next line. Quote, because the battle has truly begun and with enemies closing in from outside their walls and within their ranks, it's impossible to know who to trust. (laughs) This ties directly to Jack fucking Barlow's line in Iron Flame chapter 60. Quote, we might not be at full strength, capable of wielding greater magic under your protections, but make no mistake, we are already among you and now we're free. (gasps) 
Rebecca has confirmed in an interview that we will learn more about the Venom within the wards in Onyx Storm, although Jack will not be a main character. We already strongly assume that at least one of the cadets that tried to assassinate Violet, the one who was on the challenging mat with her, was Venom because he had red rims around his eyes. And he clearly worked for Daddy Atos, repeating, quote, secrets die with the people who keep them. <laughs> Repeat after me. Secrets, secrets die, die with the people, people who keep them. <laughs> Check out you our have on- to listen to- yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Check out our Iron Flame coverage for that to make sense. <laughs> Which, once again, brings us back to one of our biggest speculations. Daddy Atos is absolutely in league with the Venom, if not one himself. We've talked a little bit about Daddy Atos being a Venom. I cannot wait to explore that more, not on this episode. But I I don't know. I will say, I don't know if he is because he was sent to the coast. And that is when a lot more started happening. So I do think that he's in league. Yes. What if he became a Venon out by the coast because he was tired of other people with more power dictating what he can and cannot do? Oh. And now he comes in because there's a power gap, I'll say, now that poor yep. Lilith isn't there anymore. Mm. I can absolutely see him taking over Lilith's job next year, but we are getting ahead of ourselves because here's what I'm going to say in, in terms of who is already within their ranks. I am fucking telling you something sus is up with second, second wing. There is so much... Second wing, second wing, second wing mentions in terms of Daddy Atos. Do I think everyone in second wing is a veteran? No. Do I think there's some sus shit happening with a co- like a group of people in second wing, some kind of experiment or something like that? Absolutely, I will die on that hill. This does beg. The- Maybe I won't die on the hill. I'll, I was I'll gonna say it. when I'll we make our bets, I am n- I'm going to be betting against second wing. I will I, say that I think I, that I, is <laughs> a fun theory. <laughs> I'm not gonna die on the hill. I will dramatically faint on that hill. <laughs> but this does beg an- another question. Who do you think the surprise I'm Venon is going to be? Because I absolutely think we're going to get another <gasps> Jacques, like you're Venon. Oh my gosh, we had no idea. And I don't think it's going to be someone who was as outright evil as Jack fucking Barlow. We know that Jack fucking Barlow is not the only one within the Venon ranks at Best Guy or within the Navarre military. We believe one of the main through lines of Onyx Storm will be the question of who is Venon within Best Guy Who has been pulling the strings and leading the charge from within? My guess is definitely a high ranking official. Remember, Jack is just a lackey. So it brings me back to Daddy Atos. I don't think General Melgren is one though. I definitely don't believe he is. I don't think he is either. I I definitely don't think he is either. I absolutely think Daddy Atos is either going to already be Venon, he's going to turn Venon, or he's going to be somehow super in league with the Venon while still being fully human. I'm really leaning towards he became Venon out in the coastal post after I said that. I was like, fuck, that makes so much sense. I'm totally leaning to that. I absolutely think Varish was one. He is dead because he was stabbed with an alloy hilted dagger. So I think that some other, you know how Lilith was like, when you get into the rank of major, that's when we start bringing you under the the wing of our secret that we've been keeping and that we that we hold so dear i absolutely think there's other people who are major plus who are venom i don't think nolan um no definitely not nolan i don't think that markham is one of course we are going into scribes here i don't think that he is one by any means but well like pan check no i don't think pan check like like he's yeah (laughs) so Um, it could be another person who we don't fully know yet, who maybe has just been on the page very briefly. I want to put a pin in Markham because I want to do some research before I say a definitive answer on him. Okay. Okay. Shall we move to the next <laughs> line? Yes. Quote, now Violet must journey beyond the failing Arishan wards. This has to be the Isle Kingdoms. Oh my God. I'm freaking out. The second I heard Michael say that line, I dropped everything. By the way, which is so annoying. Every time Rebecca Yars does some big drop, I'm either in the shower. I'm like in the middle of something. I was at the grocery store. (laughs) store, And like, I was freaking out when this dropped. This has to be the Isle Kingdoms. Like there is no way it's not. Now. We do know from Rebecca that they're going that we are going to be going to more places in the world within each book. We can absolutely say for certain this is going to be the Isle Kingdoms. I don't think it's going to be in part one, though. I think the Isle Kingdoms are going to be part two. Yes. I think part one is going to be more focused on places in poor meal. Yes. For instance, Signeason, which was a huge part of the bonus chapter of Zayden's, you know, chapter 27 that just dropped recently. I'm also leaning away from this meaning, meaning the barons. I feel like we're going to get that in like a book four. Four, I don't think five, I think four. Um, but yeah, this is this is like 
Isle Kingdom's neon sign right now. I definitely agree that they are not going to be going to the Barrens, um, that there will be the initial focus on poor meal, but poor meal is tapped out. They are tapped out of resources. They have already been fighting this war for years. So they are looking for new allies, which we'll get to here in a moment. And the Isle Kingdoms seems far more likely than like the Barrens where the venom originates. So yeah. yes, yes. Isle Kingdoms like hands down. I, that is a hill I will definitely die yes, on. Absolutely. You and I both. We will happily be there together. Which Let's keep us. Yeah, oh. I was going to which brings us to our next line. Quote, to seek allies from unfamiliar lands to stand with Navarre. Have we mentioned the Isle Kingdoms yet? <laughs> Why are we absolutely convinced that we are talking about allies in the Isle Kingdoms? Well, let me pull several lines from Iron Flame. In Chapter 16, when Violet is looking through the unabridged history of the first six, it says, quote, But while it goes into detail about the complex interpersonal relationships of the first six, and even a little of their battle experience during the Great War, it simply labels the enemy as General Daramore and our allies as the Isle Kingdoms. Not exactly helpful. Eh, wrong. Helpful. That is helpful. That is an Easter egg right there if I've ever seen one. <laughs> I think we even pointed that out when we were doing that deep dive. In fact, I know we did. Yes. I know we did. Yes. <laughs> and then in chapter 57, I'm just going crazy with my hands right now. I don't know what to do with myself, everybody. In chapter 57, when Zayden is taunting General Melgren, he says, quote, if I were you, I'd try calling on the allies who helped win the Great War in the first place. Oh, wait, you cut off contact with them centuries ago. I'm absolutely convinced these allies are in the eye kingdoms and our crew will need to make contact with them for the first time since Navarre closed their borders centuries ago. And now it's up to Violet to reforge this alliance. They'll need to make quite the deal with the Isle Kingdoms to get back in their good graces. Perhaps in Darna specifically, and maybe the Empyrean, you know, the dragons as a whole will be a key part in this bargaining chip. I don't know. What if it's Satan's mom? Oh, what if Satan's mom? I'm, I am the more and more I'm thinking about it. I, I, I'm not going to say I'm absolutely convinced, but I'm leaning more and more towards Zayden's mom being in the Isle Kingdoms, being some kind of high up in the Isle Kingdoms. Maybe that's why she was paired off with Fen. Um, maybe it was to reforge that alliance and it just ended terribly. But I do wonder if his mom is in the Isle Kingdoms and that's the bridge. That's what gets her to choose to fight for them. It's Zayden. So if, I think it's I I love that idea. I'm gonna go with it being Andarna. Oh, so Zayden wouldn't even turn her. It would be Andarna. Oh, sad. no, 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 no. I mean the that that the bridge for the Isle Kingdoms. I think that the Seventh Den is from oh. the Isle Kingdoms, and Andarna is going to somehow be the bridge. I think that oh, I love the idea of Zayden's mom being in the Isle Kingdoms. I personally think she might be in Poor Meal. I could see both, and that's why I'm like I'm I'm not saying for certain. I definitely think the rest of the seventh den is on the Isle Kingdoms, but I, I'm kind of in like the, why not both? What if it is Zayden's mom? What if she's a dragon rider on one of the seventh dragon dens? And then, you know, and then Zayden, Zayden's mom and Violet become like buddy, buddy. And it's like being best friends with your mother-in-law. Like, I, I don't know. That's if Rebecca Yars writes that way, but I love that. I love that little happily ever after right there. <laughs> definitely not going to happen. But I do wonder. So we're, we're, we both are fully convinced that this is going to the Isle Kingdoms. We're going to be doing some kind Kind of ally negotiation or whatever. This does beg the question of who's going to go to the Isle Kingdoms because I don't think it's all of Bezgaith by any means. I don't think it's even all oh, of gosh, no. Navarre. I think it's going to be Zayden, obviously. Well, I will say he's afraid to venture outside the wards because he wants his venom power to stay weak. That was what happened at the end of Iron Flame. So I really don't know if he'll risk leaving the wards unless he takes the serum. I could see him risking to take the serum to mute his powers and bond with Sigale if he has to leave the wards. He would sacrifice his own power and I'll even say his dragon bond, of course, temporarily, to protect Violet from himself. Uh, yeah, I absolutely do not think he would miss out on this because if Violet's in, Trump, if Violet's in danger, he will go. That's saying that he and Sigail are still bonded. I definitely think they are still bonded. I think that she's just really, really pissed off at him. I am not on one end of the line for this theory. We I missed that. disagreeing with you I so much. Look at her. We were too nice to each other. Well, okay. So going. So we definitely think Zayden's going to go with them. Uh, we definitely think Zayden's going to go with Violet. Second squad. I think so. I think like definitely Re Riddick Sawyer. I'm assuming Imogen. 
because her signet's too powerful. Like, why would they not bring Imogen? Like, they do not use Imogen's signet to her full ability. And actually, it, it was so wonderful to read chapter 27 yes. of Zane's POV because we were like, finally! <laughs> I was just so glad that my theory was right. I, that was one another hill that I was willing to die on. Yep. But anyway, <laughs> I, I do think that a few members of the second squad, but also think about how many people are needed for this Venom war. Again, we don't know exactly what's going to be happening, but they can't lose that many writers to go off on a quest when okay. they really need a battle. So I think that it'll be a very select few. Oh, right. You actually make a really good point. Because I was thinking, I was like, would Brennan go? Mira? We don't know what Mira's stance is with helping with the war. That's honestly a conversation for a different day because we could go off for 15 minutes alone on just that. Dane, I don't... Th- I think Dane's going to stick back in Bezgaia. I think so too. His ability to be able to translate might come in real handy. Yeah. Ooh, maybe he'll work with Jacinia more and more. Uh Uh-oh, don't tell Sawyer. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. All right, next line. Quote, the trip will test every bit of her wit, luck, and strength, but she will do anything to save what she loves, her dragons, her family, her home, and him. This feels pretty self-explanatory, this line, given that Rebecca Yarrow has said that Violet has one goal, one goal in Onyx Storm, which we can assume was, which we can assume is saving Zayden. I'm going to also assume it's she's going to do anything to save DL of the above dragons, family, home, him. That's what I'm leaning toward. I think that saving Zayden will be part of the bigger goal, yeah. or it'll be a result of her achieving her goal, but it will not be the one goal itself. She thinks a little bigger. Yes, is he the most important? Absolutely. But he's not the only important thing. I think that the goal is more on the world saving spectrum. Yeah. Is it finding the rest of Andarna's den if they are still in existence so that they can get more wards up to protect the rest of the continent? Remember, they are not able to do any more wards like Adarisha right now because they only have one seventh dragon and she already breathed on the wards at Beskayeth. So again, that brings us back to is her den on the Isle Kingdoms? Is her goal finding the cure for Venon? But and again, of course, I know that that is technically saving Zayden, but just on a bigger spectrum because there are a lot of Venon. So can they find the cure or can they find like an antidote for people to take so that they don't become Venon or that they aren't impacted by the Venon or something along those lines? Well, I, I mean, you're thinking like anyone who is an initiate level, like if, if like once you surpass pass initiate you get to like a some level that's like you're too far gone goodbye yes but anyone who's an initiate which we can assume is a lot of people based on jack fucking barlow they would be able to be turned but here's the bigger question why would any of those venom want to be part of this experiment they crave the power Ooh. most of them are like jack that they and they chose to become venom so i feel like finding the cure doesn't really apply to saving the world Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm going to need to noodle on this yeah, part we, a little bit more. Yeah. This this is this is a put a pin in it. We're going to discuss this more like the live show or something like that. Quote, even if it means keeping a secret so big, it could destroy everything. I'm assuming this is Andarna being the seventh dragon den because she's told no one except for Taren, right? So Taren knows, but Zayden and Segale don't, right? She hasn't told him. Not to our knowledge. No. Do you think she's going to? After everything that she put him through in Iron of Flame, <laughs> you'd be a little hypocritical if she doesn't. But I know saying, that I circumstances think... have changed with him being a venom, but come on. <laughs> I, I don't think she's going to tell him, at least in part one. This does beg the question, is there going to be part one and two, or is there one, two, and three? I think it's going to stick with the one and two structure. I don't think she's going to tell him in part one, maybe at the end of part one, moving into part two. You know, I got to talk about this. What if the secret is what she finds out in Papa Sorengale's research? This whole blurb is so Papa Sorengale research coded. Yes! Because he uncovered a secret that could destroy everything. I don't know what that secret is. I do think that it's somehow linked to Andarna or the Venon. And that is why leadership had him killed. Because we really do think that leadership did kill him and made it look like an accident. Yes. So I think that this big secret that she is having to keep is from Papa Sorengale's research. I guarantee you she's going to find out how her father died in Onyx Storm. Oh, that's going to hurt. That hurts so bad. Oh, oh, I'm not ready for that yet. Oh, Rebecca Yaros ruined me. I love this. Watch it be a Markham evil villain download. I bet it will be. (laughs) It will be. I think that's exactly what it will. Oh, do we think Markham's going to survive Onyx Storm? I hope not. But I think he's going to. I think I I think not. I I think it's going to be book four where he dies. I'm going to say book three. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. I love, I missed, I missed this. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the next line here. Quote, they need an army. They need power. They need magic. So army, I think Isle Kingdom army is, I, 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 I so love how funny. it used to be a catch all for us. And now it's like, wait, I think we're right. It's actually right. <laughs> um, we know that the Isle Kingdoms do deem Navar basically too dangerous to go back to. So this does go back to what are they going to give them or negotiate with them in order for the Isle Kingdoms to bridge that literal gap and fight for them? Well, so the Isle Kingdoms have also stopped trading with poor meal the last yes. few years because they're too dangerous. So that again makes me wonder what kind of deal assumably violent has to make with them that could possibly convince them to ally and help? That is like the biggest question I have going into this. Like that is honestly one of the biggest questions. Well, now I do think that maybe if armies, if we're putting the Isle Kingdoms out on a back burner for a second, what if this has to do with the armies in Caldir? What if Arik does play a much bigger role in Onyx Storm? And actually, I really hope so. What if he goes to Caldir to try to convince maybe Halden, his oldest brother, to come and fight for them? We do know that from Rebecca that Halden is going to somehow play into Onyx Storm. We do not know how. A lot of people thought this was like as Violet's ex. Maybe I'm 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 really neither here nor there on that. Um, just because of some stuff that we do know about Violet's exes, mainly that they're all infantry and she never really leaned towards one of them was a royal infantry. But we do know that no royal has been a dragon rider, so I would assume the, they've been inter- infantry instead. It, it has been confirmed, yes, that they are infantry. Okay. Um, my big thing is that there's quite an age gap between her and Halden. Yes. He would be at least four years older than her, and she would have been a younger teenager when that would have happened. So I mean, it's not. <laughs> possible by any means. But anyway, I do agree about Halden and, you know, possibly needing the Navarian armies here. However, he's not king yet. We still have no. King Tari and King Tari is definitely a bad guy. Do we think that he's Venon? I don't think that by any means, mm-hmm. but I don't think he's a Venon. I'm not going to say yes or no. I need to reread before I before I give my I'm, I'm really being like safe with my answers right now, <laughs> <laughs> sort of. But I, I I think it could be fun if he is. Um, I definitely think he's kind of going to be one of those like he's he's easily controlled like he is not in power. It is truly the people who are standing behind him. So um, Markham and General Melgren are the yep. people who are actually in power. Um, so with that said, I don't know. I, I no. I don't think he's venom. I'm I'm gonna decide. I don't think he's venom. Well, so also along with along with Navarian armies, we also have to talk about Poramil armies because I'm assuming again going back to the part one structure. If we're looking at the Isle Kingdoms being in part two, if part one is going to be more leaning into. I'll call it the lower hanging fruit. We know that Cat and Serena are higher up in poor meal power. They're, you know, second and third in line for the poor meal throne. So I wonder if they're able to go to, for instance, Signeeson and ask them to fight for them. I don't know. There was a lot of buildup for like Signeeson being this untapped market, I'll call it. I... It's my understanding the poor meal armies have already been fighting the venom for a really long time. I don't think so, together. I don't think like they've banded together fully, have they? No, because we learned in Battle Brief that the three provinces of poor meal, they all really kept their separate cultures. They all yes. keep themselves fairly separated, not like 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 they are against one another, but just they are not all one big unit like Navarre is. So Maybe I really do think that because of this venom attack, they have all banded together a little bit more in a way, maybe not in a structured way by any means. But from part two of Iron Flame, there was a lot of conversation about the poor meal armies and the drifts and all of that. They were really starting to work together. So I think that we have already tapped into the poor meal army. They do not have anything left. They do not have the weapons. They do not have the manpower. They do not have an army that can suddenly come up because they've already had an army that have been working well, at this for a while. And to your point, they only have one school in all of Pormiel. Despite having three different provinces, they're all under the school of Zulia, which unfortunately is now in the Venom's control. But if that's the case, they're all trained to be an army together. So I think you're right, actually. Yes, I think yes. you're right. I do have some sus feelings about Signeeson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust the flyers in Signeeson. I think they're working with the Venom. All right, then. Yeah. So yes, that could be them having to get the entire Navarre army on their side, which again, brings us back to winning Halden over and figuring out what to do about King Tari. (laughs) So yeah. (laughs) Oh, King Tari. I don't think King Tari is going to survive the series. It's just a question of if he's going to die in this book or next book. I'm leaning towards Onyx Storm. 
I am too, especially if Halden is going to be playing a bigger role. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Do you think so, Zayden's going to kill him? Ooh. E- mm. It's either going to be Zayden or Arik. I could see a Shakespearean situation where Arik kills his dad. That's some Shakespeare shit is what that is. <laughs> All right. Wow. Yeah. I'm ready to burn the world. All right. So second part I, of Actually, this- I don't know because – Arix was really mad about his older brother being killed, even though he was a dick. Mm, that's true. Maybe Halden will kill King Tari. I'm sticking. Maybe. Oh, 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 oh. Maybe Halden is already Venon and he kills the king. <laughs> and then there's a Venon leading all of Navarre. <laughs> Let's this do is the a, next line here. I missed, <laughs> missed Imperian so much. So the second part of this is they need power. When I think of power, I immediately go to Violet Signet, her signet of literally power that takes, you know, manifests in the form of lightning. So is needing power, you know, her continuing to uh, train and learn how to extend and control her capabilities? I I can almost guarantee that's going to be an onyx storm. Definitely. So I will say at first I was leaning toward thinking we'll learn more that there is like untapped power in this world, not untapped at all, like the source for Venon to draw from, but like the power from the dragons, power like we learned about it with the runes and other kinds of power that exist in this magical world. But that also describes magic. So I believe power in this sense is not magical power, but political power and strength of armies. They need power. They need strength. They need the upper hand on the venom that they're going to be going up against. Oh, I love your mind. I love your brain. That's so good. Yes, yes, yes. Well, let's talk about the magical side of that, which is the third part of this line. They need magic. This one is... Interesting, because why is it so specific that they need magic? Is this, you know, regarding a, they need a certain type of signet power? They need to, I mean, Violet needs to master her first signet. We do know that Venon drained magic from the land. So is this actually a line for Zayden? It's almost like he needs to get his fix. Like it's, he needs to drain the magic from the land. Like he's losing his mind. I I think there's some kind of magic that can really counteract the Venon beyond Violet's lightning signet. And they need this kind of magic. Like I was saying about new sources of power, I think that we're really going to learn about more kinds of magic that exist in this world. For instance, the dragon's own magic, maybe that'll come up more. We know that dragons have their own magic. We don't know much about it by any means. We have not really seen it on display except with Andarna when she was young. And of course, that's very unique for feather tails. I'm trying to think else how the dragons will play a bigger role because after all, the series is called the Empyrean. Great point. Great point. Should we move on to our penultimate line yes indeed quote and they oh my god i've got this is what i got chills hearing michael say this quote and they need the one thing only violet can find the truth if this is not papa sorengale's research i give up i will bury my head in the sand and give up absolutely violet is the only person who knows where this research is except maybe andarna but andarna's being really quiet about it the truth what truth? This is this is the truth. This is what we've we've talked about at length during our Iron Flame coverage specifically. We know that Papa Sorengale has some kind of in with Andarna because of the line, because of many lines, but specifically the line in um, Iron Flame when Taryn says, quote, I know nothing of your father's research, Taryn promises, but Andarna has gone silent. If this has to be some kind of seventh dragon den truth, has to. Well, I think that this also refers back to the secret. Like, I right. think that the secret that she is holding on to that could destroy the world, that specifically is talking about Papa Sorengale's research. This could also um, not only be about the seventh den but about venom there are so many theories around that especially theories about how loath was sick while pregnant with violet and now that is why her hair is silver on the ends and rebecca has told us that at some point in the series we will learn why her hair is silver it's a popular assumption that loath was attacked by a venom and that sickness was a result of that which is what affected violet there are also theories that loath was a venom things like that. Again, there's all all sorts of sub theories of this larger one here. Papa Sorengale worked on finding a cure and perhaps that is in his research. So along with this theory is that Papa Sorengale worked on finding a cure and that is in his research. Though again, I go back to my belief that the secret Violet knows that can destroy the world ties back into Papa Sorengale. Main takeaway, Papa Sorengale, we need your research. It's the missing piece to so many puzzles. 
like if this line does not mean Papa Sorengale's research, I will be flabbergasted. Well, hold but, on now because well, I, I think say, we are in the minority who think this. I think and I'm right. starting to lean more towards another thing too. Well, let's talk about the other thing because obviously the number one takeaway for so many people from this blurb was this line and they need the one thing only Violet can find, the truth. People think that this is a direct tie-in to Violet's second signet meaning truth sayer, especially if it is Violet is the only person who can find it. Now, I'm going to I'm going to take the mic for a second because I have been very vocal about me not enjoying the idea of her being a truth sayer. I will say this. If she does end up being a truth sayer, which reading that I was like, oh, fuck, <laughs> that's 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 There's a like, and sign. I found quite a few other ones in Iron Flame, too. Yeah. And you're kind of starting to go la 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 la. <laughs> yeah, like, here, here's what I will say, because I, I if it is truth sayer, it has to be an elevated version of truth sayer. Yes. I do not think it is just going to be exactly like Nora, for instance, who is one of Varish's lackeys, who just is a is an everyday truth sayer. Because to be honest, our girl is getting this second signet from Andarna. Like Andarna is so special and so unique. There's no way it's going to be a more, I'll call it common signet, just because we've seen multiple people with it. So here's what I will say. If it is true sayer, I could see it being some kind of superpower true sayer. There is just one big key thing, and that is I can't buy into this fully because Rebecca Yaros has says that said that it manifested in Iron Flame to the point where she's like, How the hell have you guys not gotten this? I immediately go to the throne scene because that is like really the stark, like, whoa, something's not right here that we don't know. And in that scene, intrinsic makes more sense to me. So here's my theory. I think she's going to think she's a truth sayer and then realize she's an intrinsic. I like that. Rebecca has also said that it is underwhelming. She's trying to set our expectations because people are, you know, naturally going a little crazy about what the second signet might be. And she has stated that it is a little underwhelming. True Sayer would be underwhelming. Now, I also know that intrinsic, because we already have Zayden as an intrinsic, that could also be considered underwhelming just for the grand scheme of the readers, just for the readership, though. The evidence sure does to be stacking up for her to be a True Sayer. I do agree that it would not be like a True Sayer we have already seen. We have already known that there are a few different variations of True Sayers. I saw a few people on social media saying that maybe it's like a Verrick to Serum, like in Harry Potter, where she can force the truth out of people. So that could also be like that elevated version of it, taking the assumption that she is a true sayer out of this. This blurb has the theme of uncovering a big secret that holds the truth. So this could just be alluding to that, like a literal truth that people need to know, and it's not talking about her second signet. Maybe the truth is actually on the Isle Kingdom. So this could be alluding to that. And again, I do think that there is a lot of buildup about Papa Sorengale's research and being the source of truth. What if Rebecca knows that truth sayer is one of the most popular second signet choices? When she was writing this blurb, she was like, I'm going to have everything actually mean Papa Sorengale's research, but I'm going to have it coded where it looks like it's true sayer just to fuck with everyone. I could see her doing that. I could absolutely too. Now, I don't know how much power she has over the blurb. Again, I have no idea how these things work. Rebecca, if you wrote the blurb, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this also just could be the double meaning of it could mean pop both Papa Soren Gale's research and also Truth Sayer. I, I, I do go back to if it's going to be Truth Sayer, I really hope it's a type of intrinsic that is true, that leans more towards truth. Because the moment in the throne scene. She, yes, she is listening to Zayden's, I'll call it truth of how badly he wants to, you know, sink himself into her, but also she's reading his mind. So it, it could be both where it is like a type of intrinsic that leans more towards learning, like whatever the truth is. Like maybe she, oh, 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 maybe her, her signet is intrinsic, but it is realizing what someone needs at their core. Like it is it is like it's not even just like the truth it is like the core truth of what they need in that moment do you have any thoughts on that lexi do you uh, think that's a fun theory <laughs> no I, I i just like i am leaning more and more towards a kind of true sayer i absolutely agree with you about the throne scene and how that was so different where it's like wait a second like and i do think that that leans into the second second i i think that maybe it's intrinsic yeah i think that that would make the most sense intrinsic or true sayer both that's why i love the idea of her maybe in part one thinking that it's true sayer and then realizing oh shit this is actually intrinsic and i'm more powerful than i thought i was 
But the thing is, people kind of go crazy when when they become an intrinsic. Like even Zayden had to keep his shit together. Yeah. So I don't think you could not. Well, if she is an intrinsic, she does not realize that she is. Oh no. So there is some. So I think that she would actually be a lesser intrinsic than Zayden. And again, that goes back to she could be specifically a powerful truth sayer versus an intrinsic because truth sayers are a kind of intrinsic already. Much like Dane or Imogen or stuff like that, where they it's the mind signet. Anyone who has a mind signet kind of already has some kind of... No, no not no, that's not no. what I mean there. I okay. mean, like Nora, for instance, she is able to tell if you are telling the truth or not. It's not retrieving a memory or taking a memory. It is literally being able to read your mind in a way that knows if you are telling the truth or not. But doesn't she read body language or was that her? No, that her was somebody dude. else. That was her. Dude. That was somebody that's else. Right. Okay, that's right. Ah. So that is why I think it is a true sayer, but it is a more powerful version of that. And there was that epigraph that said true sayers are more dangerous than intensics. They are kind of one in the same. Again, it depends on what kind of true Sarah you are. We're starting to split hairs there. Anyway, I'm going to stick my fingers in my ears and say, la, 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 la. It's intense. Like I just, <laughs> All right. I, I hope she's a true Sarah at this point because I'm starting to lean into this and you are making fun of me. So <laughs> I want to be right at this point. Let's close this out with our final line. And that is, it's going to be split into two parts. Part one is but a storm is coming. Storm, I love this because here it has multiple meanings, right? Number one, storm is coming, basically like prepare for the worst. It's, you know, the any literary storm symbolism, all that kind of stuff. Number two, though, in Iron Flame, Zayden says, quote, what we build together has to be strong enough to withstand a storm. This is the storm. This is the testing of their relationship and what they have built together. Can it withstand the doomsday that's about to rip our hearts out in Onyx Storm. And then, of course, part three. Storm is often used to describe venom and wyvern hordes attacking. So it's the enemy is here. The enemy is coming. You think it's like an Onyx Storm? But ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last part. It brings us to the final line, quote, and not everyone can survive its wrath. Well, we... This only confirms what we already guessed, and that is... And, for, and listeners, you cannot get mad at us for what we're about to say, okay? <laughs> Promise, pinky swear, someone's going to die. There's going to be a major, major death, if not multiple, in Onyx Storm. I am still pretty heavy in the every book, there's going to be a new protector of Violet who dies. So the next up would be, for instance, Dane, Mira... Maybe Brennan, he already died, so I think he's safe. But I'm leaning towards Mira or Dane next book. I would be shocked if Dane dies, at least in this next book. Really? Because, yeah, I, I, I think it would be insane if he was to die in this next book. I also don't think that one of her dragons will die yet. No, yet. But I really do word. worry for her siblings. I really do worry for her siblings and also for our beloved second squad. <gasps> if, oh my God. Because here's the deal. I don't think Sawyer's going to die because he lost a leg and that would just Correct. be cruel. <laughs> like, yes. So that leaves Imogen, Rhiannon, Riddick, and Quinn, I guess. But Quinn, I don't consider major enough to be a big... When like, I think of yeah. Second Squad, I think of the four of them. So you think you, of Rhiannon and Riddick, who's left? Yeah. If Riddick dies, if Rhiannon dies, I... Oh, God, I can't even think about that. We, we can't talk about this. We nope, we're not We're not even thinking about that yet. Nope, nope, well, okay. nope. So I did do a quick word search for wrath in both Iron Flame and Fourth Wing, and it's not really tied to one person, um, like the word sweet, for example. It ranges basically from Tarn, Violet, Mira, blah, 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 Zayden, so many others. So I'm, I'm leaning towards the word wrath, not really meaning any particular person. Someone major is dying, and I think it's going to be Mira. I think it's going to be Mira next book. I, I worry it's going to be Mira too. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> On that cheerful note. <laughs> All right, everybody. Remember, this is just our initial thoughts, and we will go so much deeper into Onyx Storm, for instance, during our live show in Denver on October 20th. Once again, the link to learn more is in the show notes. Plus, our podcast content will focus on everything Empyrean in January for the lead up to Onyx Storm. So this is only the beginning, friends. We're so, so excited. But if you don't want this to end, and if you have not listened to all of our fourth wing and our Iron Flame coverage, we have 52 more hours 
hours of content for you. You're welcome on Fantasy Fangirls, anywhere you listen to podcasts or on our YouTube channel. You can check out every one of those episodes. Of course, as, al- of course, as always, thank you so much to our executive producer, Hayden, especially today. This was an emergency episode we did not think was going to be an emergency episode. He's a little under the weather today, and he was amazing and got this turned around for us so quickly. So we love you, Hayden. Thank you. We love you. And if you're not already following us on Instagram and TikTok, please do give us a follow at Fantasy Fangirls Pod. We have so much more Empyrean as well as Akatar content and also just like other book recommendations. We love our community so much and we hope that you join us there on social. Last but not least, do not forget to share this with your fellow Empyrean friends. If you read this blurb and screamed internally for five minutes like we did, this is a great, great episode to share to everyone who also had that reaction. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. We will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.